Hello Africa, you're welcome to AgroLink on AAU TV. AgroLink is a program that aims at showcasing and highlighting agricultural activities on the continent. Today we are here in Somenia to engage with the president of the Ghana Beekeepers Association and the CEO of Tree Honeybee Farms Limited. We are going to engage with him on the role of the association in promoting the interest of bee farmers in Ghana. My name is Nana Ismamba Sam. We'll go on a quick break and when we return, we shall go deeper into this discussion. Do stay tuned. Why University of Illinois? I chose the University of Illinois for a number of reasons. One of them is the fact that the university has a very conducive environment. It provides students with a proper academic environment. I chose the University of Illinois because of the good culture they try to imbibe in students in the aspect of improving their morals and also in the aspect of improving their dressing in terms of decency. It feels good knowing that your four years is four years and your five years is five years. Unlike a number of schools in Nigeria where your four years course might last five years, six years, or even seven years in some extreme cases. But the University of Illinois, better by far, your four years course is four years course. And it feels good knowing that after four years, I'll be rounding up my session. That's one of the things that I really love about this university. Welcome back from the break. As I said earlier, this is AgroLink on AAU TV, and today we are with Mr. Newman, who is the president of the Association for Ghana Beekeepers and the CEO of Tree Honey Bee Farms Limited. You are welcome to AgroLink, sir. Thank you, madam. Okay. So, to begin the discussion, can we know a little bit about the state of bee production in Ghana? Yeah, uh, first, my name is Patrick Adu Newman. Okay. Yeah, I'm the president for the Ghana Beekeepers. Uh, at the moment, Ghana Beekeepers Association mm -hmm. has branches across the country. Okay. Uh, it's only left with the new regions that have been created that we are going to start. But at least they were all linked up. We have over 2,000 members who have been trained as beekeepers. But the only thing that is our production is still below capacity. Hmm. Uh, what we are realizing is that Ghana beekeepers, we don't have any policy to protect our industry. And so we are all trying to do things that will help to promote the industry. It was later part of last year that the African Union mm -hmm. came to our aid. In fact, uh, there is a problem with beekeeping across the whole country, world. Okay. The Europeans are facing challenges and there is a disease we call varroa. It's killing all the bees. Mm. But the African bees are able to overcome that challenge. The African bees have uh, the potency to abscond when they see that there's varroa in their hives. Mm. And so Africa, you know, realize this is a big boost for our industry in Africa. And so they came around there was, uh, they were supported by EU mm -hmm. to create the awareness of beekeeping that Africa, we can make it okay. if we want to go into beekeeping. Mm -hmm. Because now uh, the thought is on us. We, are, we can produce to feed the whole world. And so we formed the Ghana National Epiculture Platform out of that initiative by African Union. And I happen to be the chairman for that platform as well. I mean, bringing all stakeholders in the bee industry. Mm -hmm the academia, the uh, sellers, the manufacturers of the equipments, everybody that makes beekeeping possible have been put on that platform. Oh. And that is the state in which we are now. But I don't know whether you care to get some small history about beekeeping oh, Ghana. Sure. That would be, <laughs> yes. Yeah, that would be you very interesting. Yeah, in fact, our late president, Dr. Kwame Nkuma, mm -hmm. this man had a vision of beekeeping. And so he initiated beekeeping when he established the Pukwasi Agri Post. Okay. He built a bee house. He took people to Russia to learn about beekeeping. 
they even brought bees from Russia. But unfortunately, African bees are different from the temperate bees. In fact, our bees killed the, the, the temperate bees they brought. After the 66 school, that was the end of our bee industry in Ghana. In fact, it resurfaced around 1982, mm -hmm. when one Dr. Powell, he was a expatriate consultant to Technology Consultancy Center at the K University. Okay. He resurfaced by training indigenous people like uh, uh, Mr. Ajari, who happened to be the first person to come up with a book on African bees called The Golden Insects. That really brought training farmers across the country, equipping them with uh, hives to establish bee industry. Because a lot of people were afraid of bees. We were only doing bee killing. We see the bee, we set fire, we kill them, we take the honey. That was what was happening. Was and so that was a big transition mm. from the old mentality of beekeeping to the modern beekeeping started around the 80s. In fact, it grew up and then the government took opportunity and brought the gratis project. For a gratis project did well, they also did their part. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 the way they were doing it is that they, they were forcing the beekeeping on people. Mm. They come to the community, want to treat, they teach you beekeeping, they give you the equipment and they go away. It didn't work. And then S and V came, they also support World Vision support. Uh, Haifa projects, they all are NGOs that came to support in the course of beekeeping promotion. But I think uh, of late, the Ministry of Trade and Industry established the Rural Enterprise Program. Okay. Uh, what they do is that they do uh, pre-training. They, they will sensitize the people. If they are interested, they bring an expert to do the actual training. And then they, they, they equip them with the knowledge. And those who are serious around the post-training, they give them some soft loans. Okay. And I think that has helped our uh, association to grow now. Because a lot of people doing beekeeping now were trained through the rural enterprise. And they are doing very well okay. at the moment. Okay. So um, you mentioned earlier that be, um, beekeeping associations around the world are facing similar challenges. Is yeah. there a platform where you people can pull resources together in terms of <coughs> trying to solve some of these challenges? Y yes, we have the Apomedia, that is an international association of beekeepers. Okay. Uh, we meet annually, uh, annually, mm -hmm. to discuss issues and see how best we can solve problems. And so all the associations in various countries uh, you can affiliate to the Apomedia. Apart from that, uh, we have uh, beekeeping, rural, beekeeping and rural development. Mm -hmm. It's a, an NGO, a UK NGO that supports us how to solve the problem, how challenges we face. We have a magazine that we share experiences with what we have. And I think uh, it has been helping a lot. It has been helping a lot to promote beekeeping okay. across the world. Okay, so as the president of the Ghana Beekeepers Association, in your opinion, what do you think there's a demand for honey in Ghana? Ah. That is, uh, I can tell you that at the moment, mm -hmm. uh, Casa Precum mm -hmm. contracted the Ghana beekeepers and mm -hmm. three honey bee farms to supply honey. Okay. In fact, we don't have any honey beverage. They initiated honey drink, mm. non-alcoholic beverage. Mm -hmm. And we're supposed to supply 15 tons every month. Okay. We did the first supply, the second supply. I tell you now, the contract have been abrogated. We couldn't supply again. Casa Preco alone is taking 15 tons every two months to promote that drink. People were chasing the drink and there was nowhere to find the drink again because of the health benefit of that product. And it's coming from beekeepers in Ghana to promote, to support the beekeeping industry. But very unfortunately, we couldn't produce. The second demand came from Turkey. I have their sample hive on this farm that you see before you leave. Okay. They were prepared to bring hives, support our industry, and they, they want to take 150,000 tons of honey every month. We couldn't supply one ton up to today for the past five years. Okay. Apart from this, the local packers, 
are demanding a lot of honey we can supply. The local packets, we have over 15 to 20 packets who have registered their facilities and packed for the shelves. And they are competing with the important, imported honey. Our honey even is more better than the imported one. Why? Because this year that premiered in Canada, 80% of the honey that was tested were fictitious and fake. And this was a threat to the industry. 80%, the whole world. Because all those who produce the honey, mm -hmm. their bees are dying. And they are the world producers of honey. They have to get the alternative. And so now syrup is being used to produce honey across the world. And it happened in this year for media. Okay. It was a threat to the industry. And if Af Africa and Ghana per se will sit up, I think we can make money and be in the um, But just like you said, there's a demand, a high demand for honey. Yes. So do you think it's the inability of um, bee keepers in Ghana to meet the demand in Ghana? That is why most people resort to importing fake, fake. honey to... Yes. I have been going around the whole country as mm -hmm. the chairman for the Beekeepers Association. It, and uh, it happened that I am a, a service provider to Rua Enterprise. That also have me, given me the opportunity to train in every region in Ghana. Okay. And I go to regions, the resources are there. The forage is there. Mm -hmm. And the beekeepers, to expand, a lot of them give excuses. We don't have money to expand our in farm. Last year, I attended conference in Kenya mm -hmm. on African bees. I represented Ghana with the director of MOFA. We came up with a whole idea. My little allowance I had, I was in what? I said, okay, if you don't have wood, my little allowance I had, I want to invest. And so we designed a cement hive. Okay. That is, we just used the top bars, only the wood. Up to now, some of the hives are still there. They are not picking. That is the first one is, I, I'll tell you about. I don't, I don't understand what is happening. The second one, I was in Afan Plains. Mm -hmm. The association was complaining because I saw the forage. And now a lot of mango plantations, uh, coconut plantation, plantations being established in Afan Plains. The forage is there. What is your problem? They said beehive. Mm -hmm. I planted a Cinderella. Mm -hmm. Within six years, I had the, the, the tree. And I built 100 hives. The Father's Day, last year Father's Day, I took the hives to a farm place. Gave it to the farmers on loan. If you want to pay, pay if you on loan. Or we, something like you, we share. You, you produce and we share the proceeds. As I speak now, the hives are lying at the MOFA office at Afan Plains. Okay. Only 30 have been picked from the 100. Mm. I'm, I'm here to find out. And so now I'm, 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 I'm thanking God that there are interventions of research institutions coming into our industry now, which we are going to unfold in our interview. Okay. A lot of GIZ is supporting us to start with the Greek institutions. So that at least we have people having diploma certificates in beekeeping. I think it's one of the areas that we are lacking. So when we get the youth involved in beekeeping, mm -hmm. I think uh, we are going to do our own research. We are all going to see the youth now, seeing the need to go into beekeeping. Because now, if you, you take me to Accra, you tie me to Accra, I'll come back to so many because of beekeeping. Because I know what I'm benefiting out of beekeeping. Okay, so um, talking about the loans that you grant to um, bee farmers in Ghana, how cost intensive is this venture? Oh, if you want to establish as a young man, mm -hmm. apart from the hives I was talking about, there are a lot of traditional hives that we can use. You see some of them on my farm. I even use barrel, old barrels as beehive basket and so you don't have any excuse we, we, you, you when you look uh, you see some uh, four gallons hand mm -hmm. there are a lot of traditional ones ethiopia is the african largest producer of honey 60 percent of ethiopians hives are mm -hmm. traditional and so what, what we can't say that we don't have money so we can't do beekeeping 
We can still do beekeeping. That's true. But then, you know, probably it's because the people are not aware of these traditional ways of venturing into honey production. And yes, they are. In any way, I have to believe because exactly. a lot of the NGOs and the people come talk up about uh, Langstroth mm -hmm. Hive, Kenya, these type of hives. And they relegate the traditional hives, okay. which we don't have to do. We have to go side by side with the traditional. So what's the hives. role of your association in making sure that you promote the tradition with the modern way side by side? Side by side. In meeting the demand for, for yes, the production. Because there's a large demand for it. That, that, that's what we are trying to encourage now. In fact, the uh, Volta Region Association, VORAP, mm -hmm. have started uh, initiating traditional hives, which is a, a good story. Uh, the cement hive I was talking about oh. is very less uh, to produce one bag can produce about seven beehives. And so when you look at the cost, mm -hmm. it's not much. And we are encouraging the basket and the bamboo hives. Uh, in fact, uh, one of uh, the consultants who is a Ghanaian, okay. I want to, as I'm talking now, he's on his way to Ethiopia. Uh, he's going to do a lot of training through GIZ for them on farmer bees. And he came back and he had to drive to Somalia. Say, Patrick, we are joking. I saw the traditional hives the Ethiopians are doing. And so this come the end of this year, we are putting our papers together and we collaborate with the Ghana Beekeepers Association mm -hmm. so that we will start to train them how to produce the, a lot of the traditional hives so that people cannot complain. Because when we get to the community and we can get bamboo, we can get uh, sticks to build baskets, we can get cow dung, we can get clay, we can build hives so that we encourage them to produce a lot of the traditional hives so that we go side by side with the uh, modern hives to meet, to be able to produce to meet the demand that is killing us. Okay. Yeah. But then, um, is there someone who is currently um, in the into the traditional way of producing hives in Ghana? Uh, solely, we, 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 we blend okay. the traditional with this. Because I mm. think probably, you know, um, the weather conditions are different. Yeah in Ethiopia and in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So it might work there, but it might not work, work here. There. And for someone who is now, maybe someone who is now trying to venture into agriculture, choosing honey production as the specific venture, venturing into this with the meager resources that person has, venturing into something that nobody has done solely in Ghana. How are you going to convince someone like that to venture into a traditional way of producing hives? Like we, we, with my outfit, for instance, mm -hmm. if you come for training, we train you, okay. we visit your community, we look at the environment, okay. and we advise you on mm. the type of hives to start with. So it depends on the environment. Environment. Okay. And so environment to environment, okay. uh, it will work. When you look at the Ethiopian environment, our northern environment, the transition zone environment is similar. And so we encourage them to do that type of hives. So that uh, wasting that is a lot of rain, when we use, uh, we, we realize when we use the cement, it won't work there mm -hmm. because humidity and, uh, you know, honey is hygroscopic. Mm -hmm. It absorbs a lot of moisture. It will affect the honey quality. And so we look at the type of hives we use there. And so it's something that we want to collaborate. In fact, as I, I said from my other speech, I said, now all the Greek institutions are going to train people in beekeeping, you know, professionals. Honey for business, beekeeping for business. Can you say all the agri institutions? Yes. Uh, GIZ took some of us. In fact, okay. I'm part of those who drew the syllabus for the institutions. Hmm. And so we are going to start. Somebody can specialize in hive production. In fact, we are taking the value chain. Hmm. Somebody can specialize in equipment. Somebody can specialize in hive installation. Somebody can specialize in uh, uh, honey harvesting. Mm. So that if you are an investor mm -hmm. and somebody is able to tell you, look, you can invest in this area, 20 hives, and you can put in. There will be a professional who will come and do the installation for you. Okay. There will be a professional who can come and do the harvesting for you. In fact, that is the way we drew the syllabus for the agricultural institutions. And then now, the new... The Bunso Environmental University is starting a, 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 a postgraduate diploma in okay. apiculture, mm -hmm. and we, we are very happy. We, the beekeepers, are happy because a lot of research has not been done in African bees. Why? Our bees are wild. 
all the documentary we, we see on telly, YouTube, are temporary bees. You see somebody harvesting without putting on anything. If you go and try the African bees, you will die. And so now, if the research institutions and the universities are now coming to do certificate and diploma in apiculture, then they will research on African bees, and I think it will also increase our production. Yeah. We'll go on a quick break and then we come, which I'll talk about the role of your association in promoting the interests of bee keepers in Ghana. Right. Okay. We've been discussing honey production in Ghana with the CEO of Tree Honey Bee Farms Limited. We'll go on a quick break and when we return, we shall talk more about the role of the association in promoting the interests of bee keepers in Ghana. Do stay tuned with us. This is Africa's most friendly nation, Ghana. A warm reception awaits you in an environment where you can discover and harness your full potential. Your home is an academic haven lying northeast of the city center, a quick dash from the airport. A spirited community where young, vibrant minds are empowered to express themselves, break academic boundaries, and thrive in an atmosphere of rich cultural heritage and excellence in various collegiate and extracurricular activities. This institution represents a whole new world of fun and offers you a variety of activities, facilities and services geared towards your total development. Believing in the uniqueness of all our students, we encourage them to pursue excellence in integrity. Welcome to the University of Ghana, your preferred academic destination. Welcome back from the break. This has been AgroLink on AAU TV. And today we are in Somenia to discuss the role of the Association of Ghana Beekeepers in promoting the interest of beekeepers in Ghana. And I am with the CEO of Tree Honey Bee Farms Limited, who happens to also be the president of this association. We are going to engage with him now on the role of the association. You're welcome back from the break. Thank you, madam. So um, first of all, who can join this association? In fact, the association is open to uh, I would say three categories of okay. people. The first one are beekeepers. Okay. If you are a beekeeper, you want to join the association, you are welcome. Mm. If I, you are a researcher or a, a, a student mm. who is doing agriculture and you are interested in apiculture, okay. you can join the association. If you are a packer, and so we, we take them as they are uh, off tickets of our production. You also join the association so that we can jaw jaw and see how best we we'll produce the best quality to meet the demand for the people who are marketing the products. And so this category of people, and they cut across ages. Mm -hmm. The educated, the aged, the young youth are all welcome to join this association. So what will someone who is not part of the association miss from not joining the association? Uh, if you are not part of the association, uh -huh. uh, we share a lot of technology, we share a lot of experience on our platform as the association or at our conferences. Let's say, for instance, the baiting, how to get bees into the hive, uh -huh. is a problem. Okay. Because we don't breed bees in Ghana. And because of that, our bees have natural resistance to every disease. When we, when we get to diseases, we don't have, apart from, uh, it's not, we don't call it disease, the pest, the wax moth, and we tell my friends of the bees. Mm. Apart from the wax moth, it was reason that we started tracing the varroa. And the varroa to realize, as soon as the African bee realized the eggs are being attacked by the varroa, they abscond and leave everything down. Why the temperate bees will be there, it will be well, it will be well, and all of them will die. This is the difference between the African bee and then the temperate bee. And so we share experiences okay. as a member of the association. How you get the bees into your hives very quickly. The baiting, we call it baiting. We have to bait the bees because we use the natural environment to colonize our hives. And so we bait. And the baiting, what do you learn from the books? Mm -hmm. 
some environments it won't work in other environments we have extra things that we do and so if you are part of us we practical share with you knowledge. the practical mm -hmm. knowledge we share with you so in terms of collaboration, who does the association collaborate Oh, in with? fact, at the moment, the government was not recognizing it. But the past, when uh, the AU came, now MOFA have an office for beekeepers in Ghana. Oh. Uh, in fact, the uh, animal production units have allocated a particular dex. And I think we have Dr. Razak, he's in charge of beekeeping. When you go to MOFA, uh, they are now trying to put as part of the animal production so that we can also produce a lot of honey. But they haven't supported it with any logistics, but at least with uh, the advice, uh, going to conferences, supporting us. In fact, those who went for uh, apiculture, they were given letters from MOFA okay. as uh, members of the Ghana Beekeepers Association to get visa so that they will go and learn and come and share. At the moment, as we speak now, we are having a honey show in London. Uh, some of the association members uh, going to participate so that they attend the lectures and learn more and come bring it to share with the members. And so we have opportunities uh, across Africa and then uh, international and members of the association benefit from these conferences and workshops and seminars. Okay, so bringing it down, do um, the beekeepers maybe within Somenia, do they collaborate with non-bee farmers? in the community yes so many is a typical example in fact at the moment we have a lot of mango plantations okay. and bees are pollinators oh, okay. if the last bee dies we have three years to live on earth because they, they are major pollinators and so the mango farmers association are part of us uh Mufa are part of us oh. uh, we, we 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 are doing pollination for the mango farmers my, 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 my farm, for instance, adopts about three mango farm on plantations. And then we install, we do the pruning for you, and the bees pollinate your mangoes. In fact, the few hives that we, 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 we've started with, mm -hmm. their production increased about 60%, okay. which they admire. So now the, the, the farmers are chasing us to establish, to, they will come and learn, and then we establish. Because if you don't learn about African bees, it's difficult to handle them. They'll be on your farm and they'll be threats. But if you know how to handle them, you know where they have to pass, where they don't pass, what, what you have to do, you will be with them and you will not know you are with African bees. And that's what we are doing. So the, I think the Mango Farmers Association are collaborating with us. Okay, so yeah, how do they get into contact with your association in terms of collaboration? Uh, what they do is that uh, their annual meetings, they okay. invite us and we talk about the pollination services. We share with them uh, those pilot farms, their production level, oh. and the, the farmers themselves to testify about what is happening. And I think uh, it's really helping. We are now trying to help the cashew farmers in the Bronx too oh, okay. with that same concept. Oh. Uh, UCC have helped them with training on pollination and the bees as agents of pollination. And so now we are collaborating with them so that we will help them with our beehives. And so a lot of the farmers too now want to get into to be part of the beekeepers association as well so that they can use the experiences to do their pollination to increase their production so taking it to the higher education level you know the senior staff in universities are always undertaking research activities in order to promote themselves so in what ways do you collaborate with these people to promote beekeeping in ghana in fact actually for the past times mm -hmm. it has been very difficult for be we the beekeepers and then the association as well but come last year I think we were invited to Bunsu to uh, put down the syllabus for the postgraduate diploma one year oh. in apiculture. Okay. That's a big breakthrough for us. And they are going to do a lot of research for us. Uh, we have some of our members who have strived in doing PhD on honey in intellectual property. Now it's with uh, CISRR. He's also working there so that oh. Forestry Commission Mm -hmm. can come together. In fact, Forestry Commission are uh, one of our collaborators. Oh. Uh, Game and Wildlife, Fire Service, we, we put all of them together because we have to work with them to promote the industry. In fact, Dr. Kwame Kuma realized if forestry mm -hmm. will be trained mm -hmm. as beekeepers, 
will protect our forest. When we walk on this road, the only forest you can get is this because of the bees. bees. At times I come and I see cutlass. You come, you start cutting the trees, and the bees will suck you and you leave the cutlass. And so, if Ghana wants to promote afforestation, then Forestry Commission to adopt beekeeping. Every forester must be trained as a beekeeper. As a beekeeper. It's going to earn a lot of income from the honey to support his salary and at the same time protect the environment. This is one area that um, the government have to look at. The government has yeah. to look at. Okay. So um, how is the association promoting innovation in beekeeping in terms of crossbreeding, in mm. terms of housing for bees? Uh, <laughs> after that, in fact, after the housing, we are oh. working on it. Uh, we, we realize some of the boxes are big, some mm -hmm. are small. We realize the standard hives that we had, the bees are not able to finish. Why not we look at the environment and see the production that will suit our mm -hmm. bees? One. But the crossbreeding, we want to protect the natural distance of African bees. Mm -hmm. We are highly against it. Even if, if you want to take our bees and go and crossbreed outside, we'll accept it. But if you want to do it in Ghana, we'll attack you. Why? Mm -hmm. A lot of the crossbreed bees mm -hmm. are having a lot of diseases. Okay. But our natural bees are able to fight our own, their own things. As I told you about the varroa, it's a breakthrough for us in Africa. African bee, if you, you worry him with research, research, they will abscond. If, even if you carry the hive from this place in the car, slowly you go and put it somewhere, they will have come before they will come back. They don't like disturbance. That is the nature of our bees. And they are hard working and they are very security conscious. In fact, if we go and shake one hive right now, all of us have to vanish from this place. One hive alone has over 30,000 bees. And how many of us are here? And all the 30,000 bees, every single bee can sting. The 30,000 that are the worker bees can sting. Mm -hmm. If you see a colony, we have only one queen. We have about three to 400 drones that are male. And then we have 30,000 to 60,000 worker bees that are tendency to sting. And so one colony can take a whole community into hostage and so our bees uh, would like to see how best the researchers can research but with the breeding we want them to take their time so that we enjoy the natural this thing about our bees so you are not in support of gmos no at all okay, but then if they start gmo it will affect our industry mm -hmm. it will affect our industry but we are lucky, we don't have a lot of plantations. Mm -hmm. Our bees rely on the natural environment. This place for we have a lot of plantation. But apart from the plantation, we have a lot of nectar sources. You see that I've planted moringa. It's an alternative. You have some, I have sunflower. I just harvested the sunflower. There are alternatives that I use. I have popo to support. I have neem, I have acacia, I have lucinia, before the mango is there. And so this particular research center, I harvest three to four times a year because of the environment I've created for them. When uh, mango nectar comes, I harvest honey. When the moringa comes, I harvest honey. When the sunflower comes, I harvest honey. When the neem and acacia come, I harvest honey. I have the cemetery there. They move there. They are able to move within three kilometers and come back. And so we have the environment. We have the environment. And we have the bees who have been rampaging all over. They have been leeching people in Accra, the college. But now Ghana Education Service, as we speak here, we have to go and remove bees from their ceiling. Because they are doing renovation. With the bees, they, can't, they won't allow them. We have to go and help them to do that. And so we have to protect our bees. In fact, I just removed the sticker from my car. My motto is don't kill the bees. My motto. And so because of that motto, anybody who sees a cluster or swarm anywhere, they will call mm -hmm. me. You say we shouldn't care. Come and take them away. And we prefer that. So that we'll be getting more. You see, every colony produces yeah. two swarms every year. And so if you have one colony, the boxes here, if they are 50, 
within a year, I'm going to get to, uh, 50 times 2, 100 colonies. Free, they are going free. That's why we, we say we don't need to be breeding Why we have the bees that can be producing more bees for us. Okay. So we don't have winter yeah. to keep the bees indoors. Okay, so um, talking about all the risks associated with um, mm. beekeeping in Ghana, who, in your opinion, can be a beekeeper? Mm, I, 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 I said from onset that every person, everybody mm. can be a beekeeper. If you learn about African bees, you can be a beekeeper. If you don't, then forget. We had an Indian last month in, in Kuranza, as an expert, coming to share his knowledge in beekeeping with us. And the beekeepers told my man, our bees are different from Indian bees. Uh -huh. This man, you don't know anything. They went, he went and removed just one bar. The man was hissing it in the mortuary, mortuary right now. He was lynched by our bees. He died. He couldn't run. And the bees killed him. And so with our bees, you have to learn about it. Anybody want to go into beekeeping and you don't learn about it, forget. You go, the first thing, you'll never go there again. But if you learn, I can tell you, for one year, you cannot even have one stink. If you dress properly, you can handle these bees and you'll be so happy and you continue to handle them. Uh, last week, I had a program at a, a village. Very unfortunately for the guy, he was afraid of me, but I addressed him. I don't know whether it was true. I don't know what happened. I said, I'm going with you. He didn't talk. When we went, he saw the bees moving on the hand. Eh? He said, Mr. Newman, can you brush? And I said, no, you, you, you just see what is happening. After the priest said, me, hmm. <laughs> there was no single stink. Now he's telling me he's going to handle bees. And so, if people will allow themselves to be trained, and that is one aspect of the association that we are going to do from next year. Apart from the agri colleges, apart from uh, Bunso University, and then the VORAP, the association too will be organizing regional basis training program for beekeepers. We introduce them, we send them to the field so that they enjoy the heat of our, our, our suits and then see that the bees are friendly. If you can handle them well dressed, you can handle them without any stink. And that will make a lot of people to come. So that's the phobia of African bees are killers and we can't keep bees, we'll be out. If I'm interested in producing honey in yeah. Ghana, what seasons or which seasons should very I good. focus on? Very good, very good. We have two main seasons. Okay. Uh, we have from December to April is the major honey flow. We call it the major season. What happens is that the bees collect nectar and they store. So when the rain starts, they'll be feeding on the honey. Oh. It's their food. But we build excess chamber for them to, so that we'll be harvesting the excess and we'll leave some for them. And so then we have the minor August, September. But this year, the pattern have changed. I started my August minor harvest and the rain starts and I have to stop. Because if I don't stop, the little honey that they've stored, uh -huh. They, they, I will go and take it and they will not have and they will abscond. And this is one of the challenges a lot of beekeepers don't know. They don't know the type of honey they should harvest and the right time of harvesting. And it's affecting a lot of their production. But I think through the training, we'll get them there. And they will understand the type of honey they should have to harvest. And so the two seasons, I guess the is the minor. December to April is the major season. June, July, I guess. When the rain starts, you don't have to touch your hive. Okay, so talking about the harvesting times, are there other do's and don'ts in beekeeping? Yes. Okay. What are some of them? Some of them is uh, don't put on perfume <laughs> when you are mm -hmm. getting closer because the wax is used to preserve perfume. All the perfume we put on, bee wax is what is used to preserve it. That's why it doesn't get rotten. And so when you put it on, they will gum for the wax in it. You don't have to take alcohol because they are very sensitive. When the atmosphere changes, they are able to alert and then the workers will come out to attack. They don't like noise. And so when there is honey mm -hmm. and you create noise, it means they have to protect the honey. That is why they become wild. You can keep bees in your house, provided you can harvest at the right time. Nobody will know you are keeping bees. They will not stink anybody around. But when there is honey, they become more aggressive. And so, those who want to keep bees closer to community, they have to understand this. So they know the actual time to harvest the honey. Now, one of our problems, bushfire. 
And so beekeepers have to be. That's why you mm -hmm. see, you ask me my tree and my mm -hmm. company's name. I do a lot of nursery. I plant a lot of trees for my bees. We have to plant a lot of trees so that we, we stop deforestation. Then the fire destroys uh, bees. This year we are going to have shortage of honey. Why? The rain was too much. A lot of hives have been carried away by the water. And so we are not able to meet the target. And now a lot of hives have been taken away by the water. Some have been burned by bushfire. We are going to have a lot of deficiency. And so this year, my increase, I'm going to increase my honey to another level because I don't have bushfire in Somalia. Hmm. And I'll harvest my three times a year. a year. And so the jerrycan is going to move higher because now, even now, as we sit here, you pay me money before I supply you honey. Instead of crediting, you pay before. And this is the business we are doing now. Okay. Yeah. And so, in your opinion, what's the way forward for beekeepers in Ghana? We have a brighter future if the youth will get involved. Uh -huh. And I think with the intervention of the technical universities going to train professional beekeepers, uh, the uh, universities going to do a lot of research on our bees, I think we'll increase our production. And then with the GBA coming in with alternative traditional hives to increase production, I think we have a better future. Honey can generate a lot of money for it. I'm not honey alone. Mm -hmm. I'm talking of the bee wax. Bee wax. Okay. bee wax, the kilo is 50 Ghana now. Oh. When we get, when I show you products I use bee wax for, you marvel. It's a whole industry. When we come to propolis, propolis can heal 55 illness. It's natural antibiotic that the bees use to protect the honey against bacteria and virus. Propolis production can increase, can produce a lot of medicine for us. When we come to the pollen, I think Dr. Zinato came to this far because of pollen. She knew the importance of pollen. Mm -hmm. It's 35% protein. It's good for the skin. It's good for your body. It's natural for this year, for men. Mm -hmm. And now, because of chemicals, a young man around 30, everything is off. You get pollen, you'll be, all, you'll be okay. <laughs> and so, the youth mm -hmm. have a lot of work to do with bees. And we are going to get money into our pockets. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, all you're saying is um, beekeeping is equally lucrative as any form of animal production in Ghana. Yes, even more. Because you don't spend a lot of time. Yes, okay. They do everywhere. You create the environment for them and they work for you. Work. You go and claim your money. Apart from that, if you compare a drum of honey, the price, mm -hmm. to crude oil, it's about 100 times. Now, 4.5 liters is 150 Ghana. 4.5 liters of fuel is how much? Mm. You see the difference. And so... Uh, we term it to be a uh, black gold. Mm -hmm. If we go for it, we'll get a lot of money. We'll get people employed. The youth who don't want to work, they'll get people working for them. The bees work for them. Now I can say I have over 10 billion workers. I can't pay social security for them, but they are working for me. Because one hive have 30,000 workers. And so if one hive have 30,000 and I have 1,000 hives, 3.5 billion workers. And so the youth who don't want to work, they should go and tell the bees to work for them and they will make their money. Okay, thank you very much. You are very your happy. Time. We hope next time we'll call on you. You'll be as gracious as you've been to us today. Thank you very much for coming to Somania. But I'll make sure you get one stink before you go. <laughs> <laughs> so this brings us to the end of today's session on AgroLink, where we've been discussing the role of the association for Ghana <coughs> beekeepers in promoting the interest of beekeepers in the country. If you just joined this discussion, you can go back and watch it on our social media handles at the Association of African Universities on Facebook and YouTube, as well as on our dedicated website at cv.aau.org. My name is Nana Ismail Basam. Do stay tuned for more exciting programs on AAU TV.